Hello. Um, so today we are doing this slate code problem called n repeated element in size to an array. So the problem states that we get an array A of size to n. There are n plus one unique elements, and exactly one of these elements is repeated n times. And we want to return that element that is repeated n times. So we have an array that has size to n. N plus one are unique and then one element that is repeated n times, which we want to return. So for example, this array has size four, which means n equal to two, which means here that the element that is repeated n times is three. Same thing for the other examples. Um, the array has size at least four, and it's, uh, we know it's even, and we know the size is up to 10,000. So this is useful, which means we don't need to worry about empty um, lists or things like that, yeah? So this problem can be solved in multiple ways. So let's start exploring these. Um, so the first solution that we can do here is a very simple one. We can just sort the array and then look for any um, adjacent. So it's not sorted, so we can just sort it. So for example, with this one, we could just, um, we could just do something like this. And if once we saw this one, it would be one, two, two, and then three, five. So here we could just go through this and count. Once we find um, a count that is bigger than half of the size of the array, which is three here, then we can just return that number. So this is a pretty straightforward solution. Um, let's code it. So first we need to sort. And then after that, we need to just, let's just initialize um, the counter and just n as the length of the array. So the count, we're just gonna start with one. And so that in my um, range here, I'm gonna start with one. So at least there is the first element that counts as occurred once. And then from there, I could just um, check, check between if I, AI is equal to the one before it. Um, and so if it's equal, then I could just increase my count by one. If it's not, then I could just initialize, reinitialize my count to be just one for the new element, right? Um, and then after that, I could check if it's half. Um, since n is even, we don't need to worry about any, this will be a good value, so we don't need to worry about um, if it was three or something. Um, and so if we reach it half, then we found our element. So we just return it. Um, and here, this case will probably never occur since the condition of the problem says that we have, we do have an element that is of size n, but just in case like it's at the end, um, for example, for something like one, two, three, three. Um, so we may exit before reaching that. So let's just return the last element, right? Um, okay, so that's about it. Um, let's run this. Okay, so here we have one that where the solution is at the right edge. So let's just do some edge cases where if it was at the start, so something like um, one, five, like this. Okay, that one works. Let's do another edge case where let's say the element is scattered um, here. So the size here is six, seven. So we need another element. Mm, yeah, uh, the problem states that we need every element, other element than the repeated one needs to be unique. So should have uniques there. Okay, so let's submit this one. Okay, so it passes, good. Now let's try another approach. So the other solution that we can do here is just use a counter. So just count 
we can just count how many um, each element, how many times it occurred, and then pick the one that occurred and divide it by two times. So, so this one too is very straightforward. So the way you are going to do this one um, in Python is very easy. You could just use this thing called counter. So if we do, for example, let's say we have an A that is this one, and we use counter from collections library, it gives us the element and how many times it occurs. So we can just use that. So counter of A, that would be the number of occurrences, and we can just go through them. So um, this will give us the key and the value, and we can just check if the value is bigger than one, then we found since every other element is unique, if it's bigger than one, then we've found our element. We can just return it. And um, otherwise, just return the last element. Um, this case will never, uh, probably never happen because of the problem condition. Yeah, we need to import. Oops, sorry. Uh, yeah, so we need to import. Um, Counter and from that we should be good. Okay, so this solution passes. Um, this one can be written in even shorter way. So counter has this handy method called most common, where it returns the the elements ordered by the most common one. So for example, here three is the one that occurred most. And that's what we want basically. So we want the first one, the most common one. So it gives us the, the element and how many times it occurred. And so in order to get the element, we could just do zero um, to get the element. And so we could just use this as our solution instead of manually calculating it ourselves here. So we could just do return, and that should give us um, the same result. Yep, so let's submit this one. And that one passes. Um, okay, so another also clever solution is to look at the intu an intuition that we can have here. So, so the problem says if we have So it says that we have an array of size 2n, n plus 1 are unique, and then n repeated by. Or repeated n times, actually. And so for this to happen, actually, then for this element that is repeated, it must be either at a position if that element is a position i, then an element like it must be either at position i plus 1 or i plus 2. It, can, it can't be further than that because you have just n plus 1 and you have to put them between these n elements. And so eventually you'll end up with, a, every time you'll end up with either it's next to it or the one after. Um, it, it, it can be otherwise. Um, so there is a, so we can go from this intuition and find the solution. And so the way we will do that is just we will go through the array and the length of A. So we'll start from two because so that we can check. Um, so here I, I put I plus one. You could also just do it for the previous ones, um, which is the same, the same um, idea. And so I put two so that I could go back to I minus two. Um, and so I could just check if AI is equal to AI minus one or it's equal to AI minus two. Then I could just return that element because that must be the repeated one. Um, now, if I didn't find any element that has that, then it must be the, the element that I, um, that I didn't check here the one at one position or at zero position, one of those. Um, so it must be, so if 
if it's not one of these, then it must be the case where it's something like this. Let's say, and then this. So this case here, it will not be found by this because, because we start here. And so for that, we can just return the element at zero position. And so we could just do return a zero. Uh, yeah, delete this. Oops, that's not gonna work. Uh, I have a problem somewhere here. Yeah. yeah, I I should put this at the end. Yep, so that passed, and that works. Um, okay, so one last solution. Um, which is also very clever. So we said we have n plus one unique, right? And then we have el the elements repeated n times, right? So what does that mean? If we take the set of the elements at i, that means we have this, this here contains um, the n plus one uniques plus the, el the, the repeated element once, right? Because it's the set. So if we take the sum of all the elements, which means this one here includes the n plus one uniques and all plus all the repeated ones, the repeated elements occurrences. So if we take that sum of a and this minus the sum of the set of a, this should give us the n minus one repeated element, right? Because here it's repeated once and here it's all of its repetitions. So this one here is n and this one is one. So if we take the sum of this minus the sum of this, we will get n minus one repetitions of the elements, right? And so since we know it's n minus one, we can just take this to get the element itself, we can just take this and divide it by n minus one, right? And what is n, n actually? n is just the length of a divided by two. It's half, that's what, what this says. It's two n, the size of the array is two n. So, in, so we can just return the sum of a minus the sum of the set a and we could divide by the length of a, which is to give ourselves n um, minus one. And that's pretty much it. And that solution passes. Uh, that's all for this time. See you next time. Bye.